about terms and conditions all right some people ask me Jason why are you so strict about having people share their full correct name when they email you in the confidential and my answer is always well you know my full correct name I simply ask the same consideration of you don't you want to participate with the geometric level playing field of contract? Because if so, you will share your full correct name. Now, there are other reasons as well. But let's backtrack and let's, let's zoom out and look at the whole scenario. Because these are rule one, rule equal judge mechanics, folks. I'm teaching right now while I'm driving. What happens when you email me? Well, here's the first thing. You are contacting me, meaning you want something from me. You have a question, you wanna say something, there's a reason. No one is twisting your arm to contact me that I know of. No one is forcing you to do that. You're doing this of your own free will and volition, right? Okay. We've established that. We've also established that everything is contract. So when you contact me, you are stepping aboard my vessel, okay? My vessel has terms and conditions. It would be just like if you were actually stepping into my house. There are terms and conditions that you must follow. You may know them, you may not. It's just basic etiquette, right? You go to someone's house, you take your shoes off before you go in. You take your hat off before you go in. You know, the, you don't walk in naked. You don't piss in the corner. It's just basic rules of etiquette. And you tell me your full correct name before you pass the threshold. It's pretty simple. Pretty simple. But there are some folks out there, and a lot of these folks are the common law type folks, who don't want to do that. Like, they have a problem with sharing their full correct name. They only want to share their first name, or they only want to share a nickname or a nom de guerre. And they get really, really butthurt about it for some reason. For example, I had an individual contact me recently at the bottom of the, you know, they told her, said a bunch of stuff, and then at the bottom of the email, they put the word Raven. Okay? Okay. If that's what it says on their live life claim, if it says Raven, and that's the only word that's on the live life claim, and that is their correct name, is colon Raven full stop, I get it. But I know, chances are that is not the case. All right? I know a Raven. I use the name Raven to refer to my tutor, my brother, my friend. Colon Raven, hyphen Farad, hyphen Tohidi, colon Eferin. I know him as Raven. So if you're going to contact me and use the word Raven, I don't know who you are. I'm certainly not on a first name basis with you because I don't know you. So I just ask you to credential yourself. I ask you to take authority over your words because I will not contract with someone who does not take authority over their own words. If you don't want to step forward and take accountability for what you say in your email, then I don't want shit to do with you. And you certainly aren't going to have shit to do with correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar if you can't step up onto the geometric level playing field of contract and participate with rule one, rule equal. I can tell you that right now. So I basically wrote back to this individual using my standard email Kuliana. The first email that I will send out to someone who has contacted me for the first time or someone who has contacted me that has not used their full correct name. I will use this email template to, con to, to send back to them. And once in a while, 
individuals will feel like I'm being cold or too uh, blunt or unfeeling. And these are the type of people that are probably going to have problems with correct sentence structure because they're not used to factual type of communication. They're not used to people being straightforward with them, which what I'm doing. I'm not, there's no way that I'm being like uh, mean or anything because I don't even know these people. And so this is part of the vetting process for me. If my initial email to you, after you contact me, reach out, if my initial email offends you in some way, if you think it's mean or cold or whatever, then I probably don't want to contract with you because you, you're not really going to learn correct sentence structure or uh, have the capacity to learn it because of that sensitivity. I'm not saying sensitivity is a bad thing. I'm not saying that at all. I mean, you can do what you want to do. That's your choice. I'm not judging you. What I'm saying is correct sentence structure commands that you are able to look at the facts unflinchingly and you don't get offended. You don't get emotional. You just look at it for what it is. It's very simple. So in any case, they sent me back a response saying that they were, that, that I was cold and blah, 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 and they're not going to share their name because they're going to share a nickname because that's what they want to do. And this is not a contract and blah, 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 telling me, right? Essentially, in theory, trying to tell me what's going on here when they're the ones that contacted me and they are the guest aboard my vessel. So now... They are blatantly violating the terms and conditions of my vessel construct. So then I send them back an email in plain, simple English, telling them, explaining to them, giving closure to them, why I want them to share their full correct name. And that if they don't share their full correct name, if they don't want to be considerate, if they don't want to participate with rule one, rule equal, if they don't want to take jurisdiction over their own words, and accountability for their own words, then we're not going to contract and they're not going to be a guest aboard my vessel anymore. It's very simple. Very, very simple. As yet, I have not received any uh, response back from them. But that's the reason, folks. This is a vetting process. If you're not willing to comply with the terms and conditions of my vessel construct, then we're not going to contract. We're just not going to contract. If my initial kuleana to you offends you, or if it's too harsh for you, then what do you think is going to happen when you're put in a position where you got to go into a foreign vessel and dry dock and use correct set structure, and people are actually being rude and threatening you and being mean to you and calling you names and threatening physical harm to you? Well, what do you think is going to happen then? If you crumble under one single email from me, <laughs> what do you think is going to happen if you're put in a situation under duress? Do you see my point? I'm laughing because I think it's funny. I think it's humorous that individuals think like this. But they're more than welcome to think like this, folks. There's plenty of room for everybody out there. There's just not room for them in my construct, in my biosphere, of which I am the master and the commander of. It's my duty as a tutor to weed out the ones that cannot safely use correct sentence structure when they contact me. If you contact me, that means you want something from me, right? That means you want something from me. No one's twisting your arm to contact me, right? So therefore, you have to comply with my terms and conditions or you're jettisoned. It is that simple. And one of those terms and conditions and the most important of those terms and conditions is that you share your full correct name. You take accountability for your words. You take responsibility for your words. Because if you can't do that, then how do you expect to use correct grammar and be successful with it? It's not going to happen. 
So there you go. There's your checks and balances right there. Check yourself before you wreck yourself. It's a balancing performance. Thank you.